Hey guys, so as you can see from the title, we're talking about the five worst episodes of Supernatural Season 2. And this title, honestly, is a lie. There's maybe like one really bad episode in this season. The rest are just the okay, but kind of meh ones, to be honest. That's really what this list should be called. Honestly, the first two in this list, which this list will be from the fifth worst to the first worst episode of the season, they're kind of here just because I need to fill the list. So without further ado, let's start. Number five on this list is Houses of the Holy. I actually don't mind this episode, especially with how it ends. The idea that a priest who is murdered is acting as a vengeful ghost. There is a someone moment of an act of God at the end of the episode where the brothers started with opposite views. Now they kind of converge in the middle with the ending. I do like how it ends. However, the episode takes a bit of time to get to this element, as well as also the whole idea of angels and the mysteriousness of it. Also, this episode hinges on the mysterious aspect of whether or not angels exist, whether or not God exists. And obviously Supernatural has confirmed and rectified all of these kind of questions and these mysteries, which takes away a lot of the aspects of this episode that made it unique. So maybe when I watched it the first time, I'd have given it a five, but now just because of further events in the story, it's a four. So that's why it's the fifth worst. It, it's it's not really that bad, but it's here just because it has to be. Number four on the worst list is All Hell Breaks Loose Part 1. This episode is meant to be the beginning of the end for the season, and while, again, kind of like the last episode that I just talked about, the ending's great. Building up to it's a bit slow, it's a bit tedious, it doesn't really give you the ooh that you're expecting. It does have a few twists here and there, even though they are kind of unfortunate and they're dealt with quite quickly. Andy gets a really crappy, unfortunate death. Ava gets a great death with a head snap. The whole idea is that this was supposed to be a battleground for Yellow Eyes' children to see who was the best of the best, and it doesn't really put them in a battle. It kind of has them like, eh, 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 until the end, when there is a full-on fight between Sam and Jake. Give the guy credit, he's trying to build up this character that has almost no solid material to lay on or to work with. So he's trying and he leads into being kind of the unfortunate detractor in the second part. And again, kind of comparing it to part two, this episode is completely outshone by part two. First episode was directed by Robert Singer, second one's directed by Kim Manners. And the quality of the directing and the visual storytelling is night and day. Part two is far, far better than part one is. Part one feels kind of like a middle of the season episode, whereas part two actually feels like a finale. It actually feels the stakes. Sure, the end of part one has one of my favorite episode enders in Supernatural history with Dean just crying out Sam's name, but the journey there towards the 40 minute mark is eh. Number three on this list is Everybody Loves a Clown. This episode isn't entirely terrible. It does have a few good moments with Dean, especially with him having his emotional rage on the car, where he's trying to just deal with the grief, as well as the burden that he's been laid with, with what his father told him just before he died. But the ghost thing is kind of like a fat version of Pennywise and a less scary version of Pennywise. And this whole concept of them working at a carnival and being there for days. I said this actually in the review of the episode. You've been to a carnival, right? They don't take long. They do not take long to go through. You can see everything within maybe four or five hours. So the idea that these guys are trying to figure out stuff and it's taking them their sweet damn time to figure this out, just you feel the tediousness in this episode. You feel the drag. There's a few prop gags here and there. It doesn't feel as good as it should, and considering just how fantastic of a season opener that it, we had for this season, Everybody Loves a Clown just unfortunately falls in the place of bad timing, bad release in the schedule of it all. Number two on the list is children shouldn't play with dead things. And the majority of the reason why this episode is here is because of the guy in this episode. I'm not even gonna look up his name because he doesn't give that much effort in this episode, but he, is a bad actor, in this episode at least. I don't know if he's gone on to make more of himself, but this face of... He has that the whole episode. 
He has it when he's sad. He has it when he's happy. He has it when he's scared. And it really removes any tension we have when the girl that he brought back to life is trying to kill him like whatever Mopey McGee can snuff it for all I care. I liked the idea of going all the way back to Greek times in terms of trying to have a different spin on the whole zombie idea which was cool, I'll give it that. That's probably the most commendable part about this episode in terms of its originality is that it went back even further than the voodoo stuff. It's going all the way back to Greek times. And I did like how they have the dramatic fight at the end. And I did like kind of the whole idea of this theme of dead things should stay dead. There's a slight bit of tinge of it in terms of it coming back into relevancy at the end of this season with Sam being dead and Dean not being able to accept that. But otherwise, it's, it's, it's not that great. It's just a meh episode. But now we're coming up to my number one, and if any of you did watch my reviews for these episodes, you'll notice that I never gave any of them a negative rating, except for one. The number one choice is Roadkill. I have seen people have kind of back and forth thoughts about this episode. I've seen people actually really like it in terms of the whole twist idea, and I've seen people absolutely hate it because of the tediousness of it, the very uninteresting sort of story going on, and the twist is just so damn predictable. For some, it might have been a little bit of a whoa kind of moment, and how they write it, it's not entirely the most lazy, but it's a sixth sense sort of idea. It's so obvious that I don't know how people didn't see it. Like the brothers have these exchanges that you clearly know something's going on. You clearly know that she's not who she appears to be. Also, I don't understand the logic of this hunt. They have to go to this place because she, apparently she and the hillbilly man appear only once a year on this road. I don't know why they didn't just bother to go there and just spread out, walk around, and look for the shacks because they find them pretty easily. It, it didn't take them a lot. They didn't go on some Blair Witch Project and almost get lost and confused in a woods that doesn't have time, space, or any sort of physical realm. They found the shack within like, what, a night? Obviously it's meant to be sort of a dramatic sort of tension. It's supposed to be giving them this idea of they need to find this quickly, but that feeling of tension and time loss is never really felt. And then when the episode ends with her realizing that she's been dead this whole time, it just doesn't really come as much of a surprise. Sure, it's kind of interesting to see it the first time, but it also ruins the episode's reputation as a rewatchable episode because you know the ending already. And I know that's kind of redundant. We've watched the seasons over and over again. But some episodes can have rewatchability. They can attain that feeling of excitement and fun and good entertainment even if you've already watched it. Row Kill does not do that for me at all. It does not. It's a well-structured episode, especially for someone who's never seen the show before, but as someone who has, I just don't like it anymore. So there we go. Those are my five worst episodes of season two. Again, it's not really worse. It's just not good. That, that should be the title, maybe, I don't know. I've said this multiple times, but it, it's not meant to be worse. It's just not good. Once we get past season five, oh, you bet you it's going to actually matter. For now, I'm just doing this to kind of play a devil's advocate and then to show you guys the best episodes, which, by the way, that will be coming up soon. So make sure to stay tuned. I will be talking about those. Anyways, give me your guys' thoughts on what you think are the worst five episodes of season two and get ready for the five best episodes of season two because actually that was very difficult to put together because there's a lot of episodes that I really enjoy. There's going to be a few honorable mentions for sure. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested, more subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. You're probably wondering who I am. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural, or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. 
To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.